Good morning, Tuesday morning. How are you guys doing? Today our story is going to be Call It Courage by Armstrong Spiri. Uh, yesterday we did a book called Worth. It was a historical fiction. Um, today our writer, uh, Armstrong Spiri, he also writes historical fiction and biography. A biography is the story of someone's life. Um... First, I want you to learn about this little gold medal that is on the front cover. It is called the Newberry Award. Actually, it's, it is given by John Newberry. It's named after him. And it was first given in 1922. And it's given each year for the most distinguished contribution to American children's literature. So whenever you see a book with this gold medal on it, you know that it's going to be a really good book. Now, the author, Armstrong Speary, as I said, writes uh, historical fiction and biographies, and they usually, um, they usually take place in Polynesia or Asia or in a sailing ship. And he studied at the Yale School of Art, and he also fought for the U.S. Navy in World War I. Very distinguished guy. The first thing we're going to learn about the call at courage is the main character. And the main character in our story, you can see him on the front cover. And you can kind of tell from the background that it takes place near the ocean has a strange figure in the back that I'm going to tell you about in a minute. But our main character's name is Mafatu. And Mafatu in the Polynesian language means stout of heart. And the problem in the story is that Mafatu, he, he is terribly afraid. So he's, he's got a lot of fear and it came from uh, being shipwrecked with his mother when he was very little. And his mother tried desperately to save them both. And they ended up on the beach with him in her arms. And she breathed her last breath. And because of that one tragic event, he was terrified of the ocean, the pounding waves. He could almost feel it with him all the time. And he, the setting of the story is in Hakura. Now, Hakura is an island, so uh, you're going to have the ocean pounding in his brain all the time, and the surroundings are going to be very warm. It's tropical, so you're going to have tropical plants. It's an island, so it's completely surrounded by the ocean. And um, remember that the setting is the time or place that the story begins. So this one begins in the South Seas, also known as the South Pacific. And you can kind of see right here is Hawaii. There's little islands right there, and kind of like the shape of a fish hook. I want you to know some of the vocabulary words that are written in the story. It makes it a little harder to read, but it's very interesting to learn some new things about a new place. And the Peral pole, this totem pole that was on the front cover, that was actually seen in the story when he, he took courage and he got in a little canoe and he went to a completely different island. It took him a long time to get there and he almost starved by the time he got there. And when he found this totem pole, he remembered that there were dark islands that um, a lot of people didn't go to because they had man-eaters there. So he was on this island by himself, and he had to learn how to make things to survive. And one of the things that he made was this mat, this pandanus mat. And it was, it's created out of the leaves of the pandanus uh, tree. And, and he wove them together really tight. And every day 
he would go up to the tallest place on the island, this plateau. Plateau is a mountain with a flat top. And he would look all around to see if the man-eaters were coming or if there were any visitors on the ocean. He could see them coming for miles around. He would do that every day. It took a lot of time. And some of the uh, trees that were around him were one like this one, the uh, Tamanu, or a beech tree. And one of the things that he found when he was there was a spear. So he used that spear and he cut one of the branches from this tree and he built his own canoe. He chiseled it out and all these things that he was doing, he was building his courage, trying to prepare to go back home because he wanted to make his father proud of him. And he had a couple of friends. He had a dog that was his best friend, had been with him since he was little. And he also had an albatross and he named it Kivy. And it looks like this one. And you can tell, it doesn't look like a very big bird from that picture, but actually its wingspan can spread out to about 12 feet when they're full grown. And the albatross flies very, very high in the sky. Most of the time they don't come around people very often because they're uh, fishing for fish and squid and krill. Now, if you want to read more about the albatross, I found a book on Epic that's called The Laysan Albatross, and it is a beautiful story about the life cycle of an albatross. We're going to do a little bit of a dictionary skill. If you look, if you look for the word Polynesian, you're going to see that word in the story a lot. That can be your entry word. And when you look it up in the dictionary, you're going to see the pronunciation and it will tell you Polynesian. That's your pronunciation key. It has two forms of the word. It can be an adjective or a noun. In our case, it is a noun because we're talking about the people and their culture. And they even have dances and things that they do and they dress up and they tell stories with this these dances. And they have a certain tattoo that the men, when they, it's kind of like a rite of passion a passage for boys to get this tattoo on their left shoulder and each one of the little marks inside of that tattoo has a special meaning like shark teeth and so that tattoo is supposed to make them look and feel stronger you probably remember a uh, a movie that has a character in it with tattoos that talk. I wonder if you can remember what the name of that movie is. In the story, it talks about Moana, and Moana in this story is actually a male character. He's known as the god of the sea, and it also talks about Maui, who was a, a trickster god who pulls a Tom Sawyer act and he gets his brothers to, he hooked the bottom of the sea and he had them pull it. And they, pulling so hard, didn't realize that they were actually pulling up the islands of Hawaii. So he had them do that several times. And in the, the mythology, the Polynesian mythology, he had also had Henna, who was a female companion for him. Um, one of the things that Maui is known for is his courage. He, he had a lot of courage. He faced mortal death in order to bring uh, life to humans. It talked about him roping the sun and some other things. One of the things that he's known for is the constellation. And 
his constellation is that big hook that looks like that. Actually, in the sky, this is the constellation or pattern of stars. And uh, the Manakali uh, the, is the Hawaiian name for Maui's fish hook. And it can be seen from July to August in the west. And according to Greek mythology, they called it the scorpion. So if you want to see a little bit more about the scorpion and Maui's fish hook and compare them, you can go to this YouTube site and um, the stargazers will give you a much more in-depth lesson on that one. If you want to read this story called Call It Courage, you can use audible.com Audible.com is available right now for children at home and parents. Uh, and you can listen to the story if you go to audible.com. Um, it is one of the thousands of books that is on this site. And this site is, there's also another one called Project Gutenberg. And you can find that book and several others that are free to listen to at any time. I hope that you have a great Tuesday and that you are enjoying your life and staying safe and happy and healthy. I'll see you later.